going on what's going on we're back shout out hey one love to the f b i so many beautiful inspirational ladies in the house let's get it chat room you know how we do hey city gender what's up big shirley play nice in the chat room if you gotta question it don't do it
Bobbledy bobbledy bob, we are back, we are back, we are back. How's everybody doing tonight? Your godfather's back in the house, and the house is packed. How are we doing, everybody? Shout out to the main camera. How are we doing? How are we doing? How are we doing? All right. So, before we get started, a couple of announcements. Oh, where are my manners? Candle of the evening from Le Labo Petit Grand 21. A nice orange blossom fragrance. Smells incredible. Especially as we're transitioning out of the summer, getting into the fall. It's a great candle. Uh, just for when you want to, you know, kind of feel a little bit more invigorated. Uh, and fragrance of the evening. Probably one of my top 25 fragrances of all time. You can tell. Shout out to Kubano, a bona fide ball sprayer. None other than an E. Saint Laurent tuxedo. This stuff right here. This stuff right here is bona fide sex in a bottle. Do not wear that around your lady friend. Unless you plan on, uh, you know, yeah, because she going to jump on you. Shit's going down with that one around. Um, how's everybody doing tonight? Hope you're well. Remember, let's keep the engagement up over 50%. Guys, I don't want to have to keep asking. So everybody go ahead and take the time right now to go ahead and hit that like button so I don't have to go ahead and, you know, shut the show down. I really don't want to do that. The show is on slow mode, 15 seconds in between responses, okay? Why is that? Because you guys have been getting out of control in the chat room. Out of control in the chat room, meaningless post, filler post. Somebody will say something and somebody will start saying something plus that. You know, buy a dog and die alone. Buy a cat and die alone. Buy a gerbil and die alone. Buy a horse and die alone. Look. I want you to enjoy yourself. I want you to have fun. But this chat room represents this platform. And I don't want you guys out here representing yourselves like a bunch of class clowns. Have fun. Enjoy yourself. But just make sure when you write something in there that it's worth your time. I'm going to start out with 15 seconds. And if I see more than that, I'll go, I'll go up. Another thing, spam and post. Look. Get the likes up is fine, but don't be putting in 50, 11 million emojis. Come on, guys. Guys in a non-gender specific term. That's number one. Number two, this is also something that's going to end tonight. When the callers come on, what are y'all doing? Don't get in there and start roasting the callers, insulting them up and down, left and right, especially when you have your fake name and Noah and, a, and an emote and an avatar. If you want to roast somebody, make sure you have your picture and your name up. If you, you have your legal government issued name and a photograph that's been taken inside the last 30 days with your face clearly shown, then if you want to start talking about somebody's appearance, we'll consider it. Zero tolerance, moderators. If you see this happening, time them out. That's a timeout. And if I see it, and if I see you people getting time out, because if I catch you, I'm not timing you out. I'm banning you and you won't get a refund. So I shouldn't have to say that kind of stuff. But gentlemen, ladies, understand something that we're adults over here. Let's act accordingly. Have fun. Sure. Have fun, but be respectful. All right. Um, what else? Oh, yeah. Let's talk about this real quick, too. Uh, last week I post. I told. I mentioned I was out looking at cars. Full confession. I I I hate I hate buying cars. Some some guys love cars. Big ups to you. For me, a car gets you from point A to point B. Anybody who knows me will tell you I've never really cared much about having the latest greatest new car. However, I did go out car shopping last week, comparing the G-Wagon to this and that. And I'm going to continue to go out and do that because getting a new vehicle is going to be a necessity as you continue. But um, I got to also admit, I just, I'm, not a, I'm not a big person on conspicuous consumption and like showing, showing a bunch of that stuff off. Um, if you have an opinion on what kind of car you think would be great, fine. Um, 
But that's kind of why you probably won't be seeing any more of that. It was kind of fun for a minute, but then I was like, eh. And, and, it, and, it, and tell you the truth, even if I wasn't who my, my platform wasn't where it is right now, I still would feel the same. I really never cared much about new cars. My best friend laughs. He's like, dude, you drive. I mean, I, I live a very busy life. I'm not all around the world driving back and forth. I work, I work, I work, and I get my enjoyment and pleasure out of doing what I do. I would actually rather take money in a, in a vehicle and put it into something that's going to actually get a return on investment. That doesn't mean that you got to drive a hoopty. Everybody has to have their own balance. So there's some people asked about the car, so I just kind of want to leave it there uh, and kind of move forward. The i8 is gone. Um, and the AMG GT Coupe, that thing is incredible. And the four-door version is even better. And in, in some ways, I like them, but you know, yeah, that just, mm -mm. and when something doesn't vibrate, vibe with me too well, I just kind of let it go. All right, as we continue to move on, let's get into it. Guys, last Friday's broadcast was heavy. The one about, um, the, the broadcast uh, last week was heavy. The one about our mothers failing their daughters. Um, and I will tell you that to the women who have responded to me and sent me your letters. Wow. Just wow. I'm glad that the conversation is getting started. Um, to the mothers out there, it's not meant to be None of that was done to hurt, but it was something that I think we should have been talking about a long time ago. Um, and from what I'm gathering from the, the, the dozens and dozens of emails I've gotten in, in DMs, that um, it was right on time. Um, continue to have the conversation. Continue to have the conversation. I'm going to read you guys what I wrote in the community section before I get into the monologue because I think it's important. Um, I think it's important even on the heels of this broadcast. Um, uh, mental illness, depression, anxiety, panic attacks, all kind of compulsive disorders, and the longing for love and the inability to do healthy relationships. Uh, I want, like I say, just like I tell the men, it's not your fault. Ladies, it's not your fault, but it is your responsibility to do something about it. And I think it's your responsibility to understand wherever you are is where you are, but you got to seek professional help and do that today. Um, that's my sincere hope and wish for everybody to get the best outcome for this little bit of time we have on this planet. Um, but we've been rocked this year by a lot of things. You know, we just, we just lost Michael K. Williams, Omar of the Wire. And I'm going to talk about that. Uh, in the very near future, too, because it is my personal opinion that we're starting to see the outgrow outgrowth of men and women living independent from one another. We're not meant to be alone and separate. We're, we're meant to be together. We're, we're better together. You're not meant to have 40 and 50 and 60 year olds, no matter how much goddamn money you have. Living like we're still 20 and 30 trying to get enjoyment out of life. Why do you think people are turning to alcohol, drugs, these kind of things? Because it, in my personal opinion, there's a lack of emotional connection with people. We, we need that as human beings. But I don't have time to do that in this broadcast today. That's not the purpose of this broadcast today. Today, we're going to talk about something I really want to get into. Um, and I'm going to pull it up on the screen here. Um, with modern women, and this is this in particular goes a lot to modern black women, would they rather be loved or feared? See, if you watch what what movie was that where it said it's better to be it's better to be feared than to be loved. Better to be feared than be loved. And, and that's great in gangster movies and all that kind of stuff. Cool. That sounds cool. It sounds real dope. But I'm going to tell you, that makes for a very lonely existence. One of my favorite movie in the world is The Godfather. 
Kiss the Ring. My favorite movie in the world is The Godfather, and in The Godfather, you will, wa you will watch the descent of one Michael Corleone as he takes over the family enterprise from Don Vito Corleone, a man who was feared, but he was loved more than he was feared. His son was feared more than he was loved. And as you watch the movie, you will watch a great man die alone. You're watching a mirror image of two lives, a man alone that died with the love and respect and admiration of all, and a son who was born into having the love and respect and admiration of all and died alone. That's why that Godfather series is so incredible. Godfather is, according to AFI, the number two movie of all time in American cinema, only behind Citizen Kane and Godfather Part Two, arguably surpassed Godfather One. So y'all just think I just be over here talking crap in a suit. No, I, I, I read a lot. But I want to get into this. Black women in particular. Would you rather be loved or feared? Guys, get the likes up. I'm not going to get into the broadcast until we have over. over we need to have over. over we need a thousand more likes. So um, here's what we're going to do. Um, yeah. Get them up. Hit that super chat button too on the way in because you're going to love this one. Kick it. get into this right, guys I want you to think about what I'm about to say today we have so many women that for whatever reason I have my own personal opinion about it no facts data statistics to back it up but I think a lot of women today rec recognize especially women in the danger zone especially women in the danger zone, danger zone. that 27 to 35 when they start to look around and start to figure out like they want to settle down and they start to see all their counterparts married on the verge of getting married such and so forth and a lot of women around this age start to recognize how far they are from relationship and one question i ask women often is what man of value do you have that is seriously thoroughly vetting you to be his wife currently and what do you hear because so often that women uh, are just not prioritizing relationships and marriage until their mid thirties. They say 30, but it's really closer to their mid thirties. And by that time, life has made a lot of choices for them. So you've got a lot of women out there who say, well, the hell with it. If I can't be loved, I might as well be feared. What's the genesis of this? Well, several things. One, I'm going to talk about that thing I posted uh, and I'm going to lean directly into it. I, look, I meant what I said. I meant what I said. It's all going to tie together. Well, first, we're going to start off right here. We're going to start off with none other than Megan Thee Stallion. Megan Thee Stallion uh, did an interview with, e she did something with Evening Standard. An Evening Standard interview. And basically, it came down to, she said, uh -uh, doesn't mind making men feel uncomfortable. That's my job. I want you to ask yourself a question. 
Right now, if we switch that, if we switch that, and a man said, I think it's my job to make women feel uncomfortable, we'd be going to cancel that man. Hands down, there is no way a man can really keep a, ma a major platform, a major brand deals, minor brand deals, and anything else talking about making women feel uncomfortable. But yet today, modern women have been made to feel powerful by being feared. Today, so many men fear women power of canceling them, doing this, doing that. To even when you sit back and tell the French toast truth, they're like, be quiet, don't say nothing. Those women gonna get you. And what happens when you decide to weaken, demure? You know what ends up happening? You get more of what you've already been fearing. Megan, she said, it's her opinion that the opposite sex uh, let's get it right down, right down. This is what she said. <clears throat> the rapper revealed that she now sees how much more ignorant men are. Read the article yourself. And explain that, and explain what certain men tend to think of a strong woman like herself. When you're a, when you're a woman that's who's not a threat, men don't really bother you. Men like a damsel in distress type of role, and that's not me. I feel like <clears throat> I feel like that's what uh, kind of gets under a lot of men's skin. The rapper explained, like, how dare she talk about her, but JJ. She loves herself and she don't need and she don't need me and she's going to take my money. I just feel like <clears throat> I just feel like I make a lot of them uncomfortable and that's my job. I got news for you, Megan. You don't make anybody feel uncomfortable. Not 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 men over here. We see you for exactly what you are. A woman that's likely going to end up outside doing what you do, make your money. But are you happy doing what you're doing? Because this all, this kind of started in the 90s with that baddest bitch kind of thing. Where women were taking their power back and such and so forth. And what did you find? A lot of women in that era uh, may have ended up making a lot of money. Doing boss moves, doing boss things. But the greater majority of them single as French toast, had babies and everything else. I'm not going to even call out any names, but there was a rapper in the a rapper in the news today and almost 50 years old marrying a 30-year-old. And congratulations if that's what makes you happy. I'm not here to judge any one person's general happiness, but what we're starting to see is ask yourself a question. Do you think today's modern woman loves being feared? Do you think they actually love the position they're in right now? Or they're just doing it because it gives them a feeling? Let me tell you something. Anger is one of the truest emotions because it's one that most people can access. Love, compassion, empathy, they are more adult things. They require evolution of a human being. But you will often find that people, people will go, resort to anger because they have because at least they feel something. That's why you hate it. That's why you're going through your emotions. You're lashing out at me. So I ain't even mad at these men. They are emotional, emotionally ignorant. Once they come to grips with how, who the hell they'll grow up. Well, you know, kudos to you. Again, Megan the Stallion is going to go on the list of women. I say that we should say thank you. Just like I said, we should say thank you to Lizzo. Thank you to Cardi B. Like I said, Lizzo can get out here and twerk on TED Talks. You can have a 200 and some odd pound, 300 pound woman that can go to the L.A. Lakers forum and show her bare naked ass and get praise for it. She can actually become sexually aggressive and shoot her shot at men uh, who are sex symbols anywhere else and not get counsel for it. Thank you, Lizzo, because if Lizzo can do it, that means that means it's OK to be with us. Cardi, like I said, Cardi B, when, when Rick Ross talk about didn't even know, talking about putting a little something somebody's drink, didn't even know he lost all kind of endorsements and sponsorships. 
But then fast forward a few years later, Cardi B sitting around recounting where she actually did something to a man by drugging him, taking advantage of him, robbing him, sticking him up, whatever. And not only did she get a Grammy, she got a chance to talk to the person that would be president. Thank you, Cardi. And I say thank you to Megan Thee Stallion because women like this show that it is okay to be overtly this is powerful woman, then I guess it's okay to be a macho man. Not the not the not the YMCA version. You know, come on, not the not the village people version. No offense to y'all, but you know what I mean. So let's get right to it. Megan Thee Stallion in this article, whether you like it or not, she said how ignorant men are. They're mostly ignorant, they're this or that. I want you to understand that no man with a brand could have gone and said this kind of stuff for fear. And gentlemen, I look at this as a wake up call. You better understand where power is. Women have a media complex that supports them. Good for them. Use what you want to. But here's the thing, guys. You don't have to, you don't have to cower to this. Enjoy it. Let her be powerful. Let her say what she wants to say. But you better stand up straight like you got some steel on your spine and look forward because guess what? Demurring and cowarding and this stuff ain't going to help. Just like when I posted that thing talking about that woman on this, on this Nike commercial. And I said it. So uh, if he dies, he dies. And I said what I said. So let me get this right. If he dies, he dies. If we flip the genders, there's no way a man could have said that. A big man talk about if he got with a smaller woman, he dies, he dies. But again, I guess one way violence is okay. One way aggression is okay. And that's what you're seeing. Because not only did women say something crazy, you had a bunch of white knight men coming to run and say, hey man, don't you talk about man, I love these big women and so forth. If that's your preference, that's your preference. That don't make it that does not mean that somebody that means you can have a preference, but everybody else can't have a preference. And what do you think is going to happen when you just coming over there to, 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 to cape for their side? They turn around and call you ignorant. You better get, you better get together. You better get it together, guys. You better get it together because this is not a gender war, in my opinion. What this is, a lot of guys just have to do what, what we've been saying over here for the longest. Step into yourself. Own your stuff. Have your preferences. Have your standards. Let women do what they want to do. This is a free market economy in the sexual marketplace. Good for them. That's why I tell you guys, do what's best for you and then sort it out and hammer it out. But I got to ask you ladies. I got to ask you ladies who are not Megan Thee Stallion, who are not Cardi B, who are not Lizzo, who are not these women who keep telling you that men are this, men are that, you know, our ladies, independent, all these women who are selling you these albums and everything else, running off to their husbands and having their kids. Do you like being feared? Because that is why you're getting what you're getting from so many men today. Many women today are getting straight up. Men don't even want to approach you. Men don't even want to approach you. Why? Because... Let's talk about some of the issues. One, things that women are allowed to do today to be that make them fearsome. Women are allowed to make aggressive sexual comments, aggressive sexual comments, gestures, and statements. You have women on on daytime talk and daytime TV talking about chopping off a man's private part, putting it in a blender, and they laughed about it. Women are allowed to be loud. Women are even allowed to be violent physically and verbally. Women are allowed to make all kinds of insults, what we consider nuclear insults, ta overall taunting, shame language, shame, sign, shame insults, guilt, and the need to be right on display and, and display a complete lack of sympathy and empathy for men. That is how a lot of modern women are being portrayed today in your quest to be strong, independent, don't need no man. But my question, ladies, is do you like the outcome? Because power, if you were a fan of the Star Wars, uh, Star Wars, power, the dark side it is a path to power. It's quick. It's seductive. The light side takes longer work, but it's actually stronger. Is the fear that you're getting today, the short term power you're feeling between the ages of 18 and 26, is it really worth 
which many of you are, many of your um, aunts, mamas, nene, them, cousin, them are paying in their 30s and 40s. Because here's the, here's the reality, ladies. There is nothing that men can do to change this narrative. Oh, yeah, we can talk about it. We can address it. We can talk about it. We can address it. But until women who want a different outcome start addressing this stuff head on, start writing your own articles, start making your own videos, shouting this stuff down in the public square, saying that I don't want men to feel uncomfortable around me. I want to be comfortable around men. I don't want men to fear women. I want women and men to work together. Until you ladies start doing your part, you know what's going to end up happening for the majority of you? <laughs> what do we already hear in what are, what do we already hear in the work world? Uh, the Mike Pence rule is taking into effect. Men and organizations are starting to not have closed door meetings with female employees. Men, men of position are not are not being in one on one with females anywhere. Women feel like they're being locked out of the places of power because men do not want to be even in a position to be possibly perceived a certain way. And because that's because they're doing what makes them safe. You can't force them to do anything else. But then if you can't go into these meetings, to these dinners, to these lunches, to these country club events, such and so forth, how are you going to build the network you need to move up the organization? Ladies, like it or not, you're going to have to decide, do you want to be feared or do you want to be loved? Modern women, do you want to be feared or do you want to be loved? It's up to you. Feared or loved? Because you, I would say, my modest suggestion is this. Unless you are a, one of the women in the top, in the top 6% who are earning six figures or more, I don't think you can afford to be feared. If you're not in the top 6%, you cannot afford to be feared. In our community, 74% of the women, in that right, 74% of the women earn less than $75,000. Are you in a position to be feared? And who want to, and why would you want to fear your counterpart anyway? Why would you want to fear your counterpart anyway? Men are not your enemy, ladies. But this is what keeps getting pumped to you guys. These men need to fear us. We're strong. We're powerful. We can do this. We can do that. This is by, this is by women who have more money than you do. In the black community, <clears throat> 74% of women make $50,000 or less. Is that right? $50,000 or more, I'm sorry. $50,000, yeah. $50,000 or more, 26%. So that makes less than $50,000. So that means three out of four black women in this country make less than $50,000. That means you you do not make enough money to be alone by yourself for the rest of your life. And you are not going, and, and the chances of you likely getting with a man, being able to cooperate with him long-term to build a life to where you can actually live together and actually survive drops drastically when you lead with fear, when you lead with wanting to be feared. Maybe I got this all wrong, though. Maybe this is really not about fear. Maybe it's just about female empowerment and 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 taking and, and overthrowing the matriarchy. I mean, overthrowing the patriarchy and all this other kind of stuff, which ain't never really happened in our community. Ladies, make no mistake. You can look. And many men today are saying, I would rather deal not deal with you or deal with women from another another culture. Then deal with somebody 
who there's no peace with, who looks at me as an enemy, who thinks we're ignorant, emotionally ignorant, whatever. Think about what these women are saying, ladies. Because like it or not, when this stuff gets put out into the world, this contributes to your overall ethnic image. It hurts who? Who does it hurt? When Megan Thee Stallion says what she says, who does it impact? Just like when those other women I mentioned earlier, Lizzo and Cardi B and all those other kind of when they say what they say, joking or not, who does it impact? But today the results are very clear. Modern women have been coming out, raising, raising their hands with their overall dissatisfaction in the dating market. You got women sitting around asking why they can't even get a date nowadays. Well, ask yourself, if you were a man trying to date in this market, where you are looked at as a sucker, ignorant, some sort of negative or pejorative, what would you do? But you know what? Maybe I don't know what I'm talking about. I want to get to the ladies because I want to hear the ladies com ladies conversation. Um, ladies, loved or feared, what do you want? What do you think? Is it better to be feared? I mean, maybe you think it is. Maybe you think it's better to be feared because at least that's something you can control. I don't know. Recording in progress. Maybe it's better to be feared because that's something you can control. But how are you going to end up getting the outcomes you want? <clears throat> Let's see. Here we go. We kind of get this thing on more of a schedule to where we're not going longer than two hours. Because I want to hear from the audience. And I'm going to actually go read some of the super chats too while we're going into this. There. Oh. oh, that's too long. Oh no, that's too long. Boom, boom. There we go. Let's link that here. All right. Put that there. Let's open up the Ask Godfather link. Look, and also, I'm going to say this too. I want people who are, are new to the show. If you've been on the show before, one time, two times, I'm not. I'm not allowing people who've been. I don't. I, I'll have people who call in who've already been on the show a couple of times. There's like a two. There's like a two time limit. Um, we don't want regular folks to be popping in. Um, you know, that's just the way that's going to go. So um, here we go. The call line is up. We're going to do it this way. Take a slight break. Come back and get this thing a crack a lacking. Love to fear. Ladies only. El mundo quiere dinero. Money work. Se arregla con dinero. Money work. Si me quiero educar, eh, dormir en algún lugar. Un lugar para trabajar. Eh, y si no hay para emigrar. Todo money, money, todo el dinero Solo un par de gente se lleva el botín entero Funny, funny, pasa verdadero Si tienen la verde siempre llegará primero Pero llegaremos antes o después Solo a lo suyo, que Dios te lo ve Que por más que tarde lo veré caer Somos malos buenos y tenemos que el dinero Ya lo veré, 
YouTube, you need to do better job in letting us work through these super chat. Brooks Scott says, leading with fear is like sabotaging what's for your life. In life, it's about starting with oneself and getting out of your own way and having a conscience. Guys, YouTube won't allow us to kind of sort through some of these super chats, but we do the best we can. Appreciate, respect, machine. Uh, Carlos said, boys, y'all respect. Come in, hit the like, and hit the pocket. Great, support great content. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, I think, uh, let me see what's going on here. Let me see what's going on here. Um, yeah, I think what happens is people start to get kind of uh, comfortable with the level of content. And that's not cool. Come on, man. If you're the first time, if this is the first time you've ever watched the show, welcome. If this is your third or fourth time watching the show, you haven't supported. Take this time to support the show. Here we go. All right. Champion King says, female empowerment is crap. Same woman who claim it uh, would slit that throat of another woman just to get a bag or come up. Shout out to you. Uh, Man's Redemption maybe said, men were raised with an original tradition, uh, when they should be raised uh, to the given pookie characteristic to adapt to the modern environment. Uh, yeah, let's see. Uh, 357 IMG says, Kevin, women are package checking on a first date like Trump going from fake hug. That's right. Brooks guy, I said I choose to to be loved only by God. Okay, there we go. Modern women, modern women da, da, da. Okay, Rum Runner says modern American women claim that they want a sensitive man, yet they show no empathy towards a man's emotion. That's true. All right. Modern women. Da, da, da. Okay, now we're gonna kind of have a way to start looking through this. So, all right, here's the thing though, folks. We're gonna also talk about some of the things where men were taught to do. And the things that a lot of men were taught to do aren't in your best interest. Um, so, participants. We're gonna allow the participants in here. In the Godfather, in the Ask Godfather room, you must be on camera. Jesus, how many people y'all came in like somebody came in like 17 times? Uh only one at a time, please. I can't see you, so we're gonna turn the interview thing off. All right, so you must be on camera or or else we can't see you. Uh Ernest Simmons says Linda B. Johnson strategically calls this mess of the black community black women. Uh, fellow agents and don't even know it. It's possible. Uh, unmute yourself. Yes, hello. Hi, how to pronounce your first name? Jennifer. Uh, okay. How old are you? 32. 32? Mm -hmm. mm. So what do you got for me? Love to fear. What, are we, what is it? Um, can I not be on camera, please? Yeah, you're not. I hope I clicked the right. Okay, thank Go you. Ahead. Um, I think that 
black women today would rather be feared, um, mainly because of like um, in history, it's shown that like women have so much power as far as um, like all they have to do is call the police and lie and say somebody hit them or somebody sexually harassed them. And then all of a sudden somebody's in jail. So it's like they give women too much power and just go based off their word and nothing else with no proof, no evidence, no anything. And that's not right. Okay. Um, hold on, I'm gonna bring Nisha on to see what she has to say about it. You think they'd be rather be they'd rather be feared than loved? All right, Nisha, how are you? I'm good. How are you, Kevin? Good. How old are you? I'm 23. Good. What do you have on the subject? Feared or love? What do you think modern women would rather be? Um, I first want to say, um, if it's cool, I'd rather not be on camera. Um, That's but okay. I would say, honestly, I am in complete agreement with you because as far as like the feared being versus being loved, um, again, touching on the Megan Thee Stallion uh, topic, I think it's just the whole feminist infatuation, you know, just being that strong, independent person. And then with that, um, I mean, that fear kind of turns into a shield as a tactic for protection. So we say that we're the strong, independent woman, but at the end of the day, it's like, if we rather to be loved, we have to, we feel as though we have to put men that we want to see some type of long term relationship with. We want to see them go through the trenches before <laughs> they really agree to be with us. Um, but at the same time, that's Whoa. also like. Right, right. So yeah. where, where did that come from, though? Where do, where, where do men, why do women feel like men need to prove something to them today? <laughs> That's a good, that's a very good question. Um, and I'm going to, in my best opinion, and as far as personal experiences, I would rather say, um, based on the conversations I've had, is that certain, certain women, I'm not going to speak of myself because it's not something that I've experienced personally, but um, some women, they've been through so much where they feel as though I, if I show my true self and I show him, like, I, and you know this person that's capable of a long-term relationship, and that he okay. sees the worst side of me, then <laughs> the best possible relationship is—I mean, the best possible solution is. To I mean, I get what you're saying. You're right. Test. There are a lot of women who think that way. That I'm going to sit back like this. I'm going to hold my mm -hmm. hands out like this, and then you got to—you got to prove to me that you're worth this. But ain't nobody going to do that. That's true. That's not that's going to happen. But but I think women tell each other this. But the women who are telling you this is single as hell. Exactly. No, exactly. I completely agree. Hold um, on, hold I, on. Let me get to Chantel too, because I want to. Chantel, you got to get back on camera. I need to see who I'm talking to. You, you have your camera on and you turned it off. Uh, all right. Now, unmute yourself. Okay. I don't. I'm here. I don't want to be on camera though. That's okay. But you're not on camera. You're not on YouTube. But go ahead. How old are you? I'm 33. All right, so modern women would rather be loved or feared. What do you think? I definitely definitely believe that women would rather be loved than feared. Okay, based upon what? Based upon my personal experience, and I've never heard of men, I've never heard that from men that we are, they're scared of us or anything like that. What, what part of the country do you live in? I'm in Maryland. I'm on the East Coast. And are you single or are you married? I am divorced. Uh, are you Are you currently dating? Um, occasionally. I'm not seeing anybody long term. So, how long have you been watching my platform? I'm sorry. How long have you been watching my channel? Um, I get bits and pieces from you. I don't watch it consistently honestly so do you think the dating environment is today is a healthy happy place no i don't okay well if it's not a healthy happy place um do you think men are excited to date women today i think men are excited to date women but they are a little reluctant why? Based on why, I I honestly think that women are progressing in their careers and their independence, and it might be a little 74 bit of black women. Seventy four percent of black women earn less than fifty thousand dollars. You ain't progressing that much. Mm. 
That's a lie. Okay. That's a lie. Okay. From the pit of hell. And I rebuke it. I rebuke it. It's a lie from the pit of hell. I rebuke. The facts are out. Black demographics, black statistics for black people by black people. 74% of black women make less than $50,000. Black women are the most enrolled, but you're not the most graduated. You have two largest that's employers. Not, the, that's not my reality, uh, 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 though. Whoa, whoa, whoa. No, no, no. That's one thing you don't do. You don't overtalk me. Two largest employers are black, people, black women, the federal government and retail. There are some black women that are earning, but less than 6% of women in this country earn six figures or more. So do respect any kind of career progression. If it doesn't show up on financial achievement, it doesn't mean a hell of beans. So you're saying as a whole, women have not progressed throughout the years? I'm saying that what you call progression is nothing to be intimidated by with us men. We out earn you. Okay. We out, we out earn you, even the guys who didn't go to college. That's what I'm saying. What you're talking about, man, is uh, not really substantiated. Why are the men not excited about dating and you came and said well I think because women are moving on with their careers as if that should intimidate a man and that's just simply not true women are not outpacing men in earnings or their careers you're behind those are just facts so if men so if it's not because of job and career mm -hmm. why do you think men are not just overly ecstatic about dating Well, then I can't really answer that. Maybe, just maybe, it's because of the overall attitude and demeanor of the average modern man. Well, can I ask you a question? Sure. You don't feel like the wealth gap is closing? I mean, I know that we're not there, but you don't feel like it's closing between men and women? What do you mean wealth gap? Because... Men have be careful. had more I want you to be. I want you to be careful before you okay. don't talk about something you don't know about. Okay. What do you mean wealth gap? M women are starting to catch up and making. We're not. we're not. We're not making as much as men. Still, we're still behind. Are you talking about the wage gap? Yes. There yes. is no way, ma'am. How old are you? I'm 33. The wage gap has been disproven thousands of times. It is. It is a false premise. Univariate analysis shows that the wage gap is a fallacy. It does not exist. When you, I just watched three hours on the wage gap today with Jordan Peters. There is no wage gap. And as a matter of fact, women between the ages of 40 and 64 tend to start earning more than men. Mm -hmm. But between 18 and 40, well, I take that back, not earning more than men, earning more than men who are still in the workforce. The, the reason you're talking about a wage gap is you know how they look at it? They look at total out, they look at total income versus total out, but they don't look at total hours worked. Okay. You know why there's a wage gap? Because men do jobs that women don't do. But it is legally, it is, in, it is illegal to pay a female ditch digger less than a male ditch digger. Except the problem is how many women dig ditches? Right. I right. agree with that. So... We well, we've let's had... get back. So the wage gap. So we're talking about dating. Okay. There is no wage gap. There is no education gap, unless you mean women go to college more than men, and that's the truth for all races of women. All races of women go to college more and get more degrees in the last twenty plus years than men, but all women earn less than their men. But in our community, one in four of you will marry. The average black marriage lasts five years. Mm. See, what, you, what you're trying to do is give all kind of structural reasons for why dating is such a fucking drag today. I'm trying to give reasons that I can relate to. And mm -hmm. I've actually been having this conversation with somebody on Clubhouse named Dr. Julio Broughton that's been trying to reach out to you. And I think that you should jump, join our clubhouse rooms because he has so. a room called Austin Off Script. Nope. And we talk about this, and that's a well, the talking about something a that's not stop talking about something that's not something that's not factually uh, not factually accurate. It's a waste of time. Who filed for divorce in your relationship? I did. Why? Um, it wasn't it wasn't related to money necessarily. 
Irreconcilable um, differences? I'm sorry? Irreconcilable differences? Pretty much. You just weren't happy? I feel like you're trying to put me in a trick bag. No, you're already in a trick bag. <laughs> So you want you want you want so you're a black woman, one of the four black women that got married, and just like Mo, she wrecked your own home. Really? That's what you got from those two sentences that I gave you? Did you have a home with a man? Did I have a home? I owned my home you prior owned to your, my marriage. Thank you. Thank you. You can't make it up, folks. This is the modern this is this is it right here. Poster child, right here. Married. File for divorce based on what? Irreconcilable differences. I.e., I'm not happy. And then you want to go all around the world to ring around the rosy why men don't want to marry and deal with y'all. I don't think that's a fair assessment. I don't care. Then, then how, if I, okay, then why isn't it? It isn't it, beca it isn't because you don't have specific I don't need all the details. details. I know that you were married. You I, know you filed, I know that you filed for divorce out of your own marriage and you say irreconcilable differences. You didn't. So basically, it wasn't for cause. Rampant infidelity, running the. No, running, there wasn't infidelity. Well, irreconcilable differences is is a is something that has come around the last fifty years. That's not really a cause for divorce. Heard you. So I don't need to have all the facts, that all the all the all the all the nuances. What we do know is you were married, and what we do know is you filed for divorce. And the number you want the number one cause for divorce is in this country. What's that? People filing for divorce. Do you have YouTube playing in the background? Yeah. Can you please mute that? Sure. But my question to you is, how is being unhappy not cause for divorce? Marriage ain't about your damn happiness. People shouldn't be happy when they're together. Marriage ain't about your happiness. Marriage ain't about your happiness. I didn't happiness. just say my happiness. Mar I okay. said happiness. You can't make this shit up. Yeah, Joe asses in Clubhouse talk about shit. You, you can't make this up. You can't over talk me, man. That's one thing we don't do. I heard you. It's very simple, man. Marriage. Okay, you have this playing on and something else where we're getting background. Please have only have the Zoom call on. Marriage. Marriage is supposed to be about duty, honor, responsibility towards somebody and something greater than yourself. Mm -hmm. It's not about love. It's not about happiness because happiness is a temporary condition and it is impossible for a man to make a woman happy. You can't make yourself happy. So the damn sure can't be another person. And the difference is your generation compared to your mother, your grandmother, your great grandmother, the women that were back in the forties and the forties on before, they were a different kind of woman because they didn't just jump in and out of relationships based upon their in and out feelings. There was more to it than that. And the but you're policy, assuming the, Go ahead. You're assuming that my husband was my ex husband was meeting all of his duties though. What you just mean? said it's about duties, and you're assuming uh, that he was meeting them. Oh, you are about to do this. What duty was he not meeting? I personally don't want to get into specifics. Well, you don't want to. Well, no, 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 no. You, you, you put that out there. Yeah, I did. Well, then don't, don't, don't put, then don't put something out there that you're not willing to talk about. And that's fine. I'm just saying you're assuming. See, this is why. This is what. This is the typical modern woman. They will look for anything to deflect from ultimate responsibility with them. It's not a deflection. It's a yeah, fact. Yeah. Either you're gonna either you're gonna substantiate it or not. You said irreconcilable differences. You, that irreconcilable differences is not him not meeting his responsibility. Is he a functioning adult? You're asking me. Yes. yes. 
then that's his responsibility. You have any children? Yes, not with him. Then what should he be taking care of another man's kids? If he's my husband. Bullshit. He had a child as well. That's and where's that child? Are you talking about during the marriage or after? Because after, no. But during, yes. So you so you had children before the marriage as well? I have one child. So you were a baby mama when he married you. Mm-hmm. And he was, he was a daddy? Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. And was the and why didn't you marry your baby daddy? Because I did not want to. You cannot make this shit up. <laughs> you cannot make this up. And and this so-called wife is the one that's pointing the fingers at saying that men have are, are, are just happy to run and go out and date. You got a child by a man you didn't marry, then the man you married you divorced him. Home record. He had a child by a woman you didn't said, marry. I said you you have a child by a man you didn't marry and you wrecked your own home. I'm not talking to him today. I'm talking with you. Home record okay. extraordinarius. This is the clubhouse get some therapy. You cannot make this shit up. See, there used to be a time where women who thought like her would have been in a place to where they at least had to do enough self-reflection so they would not have the nerve to open their mouth and get out here and posture all these theories and be in clubhouse and this and that. They would have been done doing their own work saying, why am I not able to stay in a relationship with a man I chose to get? I decided to have a baby with a man that I, who, I gave him the highest honor, but he wasn't worthy for me to marry. Then I decided to marry a man who I want to say he wasn't living up to his responsibility. And the only common denominator about all of this shit is you. You can chuckle, chuckle all you want to. That's why the women are sitting there looking at you like a zip damn fool in there. The women are all looking at you like, God damn. Thank you. Thank you. The women are looking at you like a goddamn fool. Thank you, sis. Appreciate all the women nodding their head. She, and she's so childish, she don't even know she's the problem. She think it's a damn game. Hey, Jessica, how you doing? Wave. Hi, Jessica. All right. Poor baby. You can't make this shit up. I can't make this shit up. <laughs> Jessica. Uh, there it is. Hey, Jessica, how are you? Oh, hey. Hi, Hi. how you doing, Kevin? I am well. Let's rewind from that train wreck we just had. How are you doing, yeah. Jessica? I'm blessed. How are you? I'm good. How old are you? I'm 34. All right. What do you got on the topic? <sighs> Sorry, I was trying to get on forever. I forgot what the question was. Do we want to be loved well, or feared? Well, modern women, you think modern women are are are, 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 are happier being feared or loved? Just a general question. Modern, yeah, modern women are happy. They're not happier, but I believe the modern woman wants to be feared now because mm. they're going off of their masculine energy so much. Okay. And that's me speaking from my prior experience, walking in okay. masculine energy and not my feminine energy. Okay. Um, all right. So, are you having better? Are you having different outcomes now that you're in your feminine energy? Yes. So I'm still a work in progress. Um, okay. That's kind of why I'm actually watching your videos. I just watched you today. Never seen you before. Okay. Um, yes, my outcomes are a lot more productive, walking in my feminine energy as well as embracing um, my own peace and happiness. It's a lot less difficult. It's a lot less stressful. Thank and you. it's a lot to embrace being loved. Thank you. And that's what it really comes down to. It's a, if it's, if it's, it's more peaceful than walking around with yeah. your fist balled up all the time. So, all right, let me get on to the next person. Appreciate it. All Thank right, you. Jessica, got to bounce that out. Uh, Allison, and then Giselle, you're next. And then Aya, next after that. How are you, Allison? 
I'm good, Kevin. How are you? I am well. How old are you? I'm 33. All right. Single or married? Single. Oh, right. sorry. What do, you got? what do you got for me? Um, so from the topic, I believe you were saying that asking if women want to be well, loved, feared. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah, that was the general premise that we had so many women today that just kind of on this. Uh, well, you think more me? Go ahead, go ahead. Sorry. Um, ahead. Personally, I would like to be loved. I cannot speak for all women because I do understand some women are more feminist, I guess. And for them, they feel uh, in a weird sense, it's better to be feared or they feel like uh, if they're feared that they're going to get more respect from a man. But I personally disagree. Uh, Andrea, Ale Andrea, if you don't start your camera, you can't get in the show. Um, do you have any kids, Allison? Um, no, but I do. Uh, I don't know if this is a good or bad thing, but I do have pets. I do have a dog. Yeah, pets. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I know, okay. I know. That's okay. That's okay. Okay. Um, I didn't. I didn't know if it was okay or not. But no, I have no, a no. If you got pets, you got pets. That's cool. Okay. Well, I have a dog, two cats, and two turtles. Oh my God! You got a whole damn zoo over there. Hold on. Yeah. I don't even know if I have enough sound effects. <laughs> God damn. There she is, ladies. Barnum and Bailey. Think of circus. Dating Allison, you get a dog, two cats, three turtles, a gerbil, and a partridge in the motherfucking pear tree. <laughs> Why so many pets? Um, I don't know. Honestly, I just love animals and um... I have and I literally have no other reason. All right, I'm gonna get right to you, but I do you think do you think pets today serve as surrogates for relationships with women? Um, no, but I do think Ooh, you don't really. Go ahead. Well, I can only speak for myself. For me, I just I do have my pets because I like animals, and it gives me until I do meet the right person and have children, it gives me something to nurture. That's a surrogate. <laughs> oh. That's a surrogate. Is it not a surrogate? That's exactly what it is. Yeah, Until you have a husband and children, you got uh, a whole zoo over there <laughs> to give your love to. And I'm going to say that my personal opinion, mm -hmm. I believe that when women do this, they are taking the no vacancy sign off of their heart. They got something else to pour their love into. Now, I don't have anything to prove that, but it's like it's like uh, when women have a bunch of male friends around, mm -hmm. then she's getting her masculine she's getting her masculine uh energy needs met elsewhere. All right. So I, and I, I I did an entire broadcast on women with dogs. Go check it out. The men in well, there were I, loving it. I will say I don't think that animals can replace masculine energy. Yeah, um, but they could run us men away because we don't like your pets. You got a dog, that means we got to break the date off because you got to go with your dog out. You can't sleep over at night because the damn dog going to tear shit up. Cats are not so bad. Dogs are like kids. Go watch the video. Got three videos on them. Guys were going ape shit because you ladies don't understand that that's where your nurturing is going. So it takes away the hunger. It's a placebo. I'm going to give my nurturing love to this. So anyway, go ahead, uh, Aya. Aya's like, hell yeah, that's taking up space. Hey, how do I pronounce your name? Aya, Aya? It's Aya. Yeah. Aya. Go ahead. Yeah. How old are you, by the way? I'm 21. Go ahead. What do you got on the subject? Oh, okay. So I was saying, like, um, I think that women would rather be loved, of course, but they come off as wanting to be feared. Mm -hmm. So like, um, why? Because I feel like a lot of them hate on femininity, if that makes sense. Because like, mm -hmm. there's just like, <laughs> trying to put the words together, but hatred towards like, receiving help almost because like i've mm -hmm. tried to help like other women and they just won't accept it like yeah, you know what? Just, like, i am a strong independent woman <laughs> 
So. Yeah, um, I, I, I get I, a lot of women today don't want to feel vulnerable. They f they feel like femininity femininity is weakness. Yep. Therefore, they don't embrace it. They d okay. Thank this twenty one year old has high emotional intelligence. <laughs> what it is is a lack of emotional availability, and uh, and there's this there's an attachment style called dismissive avoidance. And yeah. dismissive avoidance don't do well with feelings, their mm -hmm. own feelings. And they also look at other people's feelings as being weakness. So mm -hmm. we got all these For different sure. things going on in there. And, but that doesn't really work so well as the woman, when you're supposed to be the feeling one, the nurturing one, and almost exactly. puts you in a pseudo masculine position. But here's the funny thing, dismissive avoidance and when people who feel like that way, really do have deep, deep, deep feelings. Mm -hmm. Deep. They're just mm -hmm. terrified of being hurt. Mm -hmm. So they put up these shields. So hey, I just I thought think, I was doing the suit over here. Yeah, know. and I think that like they don't see the value in it. When, um, the value in feelings or the value yeah, in Yeah, the value in like that femininity and like the ability to um, receive and accept others and trust others. Because um, I feel well, like a lot of people see like bad intentions and in everyone right away or, or assume that everyone's just always out to get them without ever giving them some kind of like chance or a green light to show otherwise okay let me I'm put this i'm put you on hold for just a second but while i do this i want you to think about this think about what's being promoted in the media is femininity and loving and nurturing mm -hmm. are actually even in style right now or is Absolutely it get the bag no. hold on hold on hold on I, it's get the bag get your own thing uh burr. let's see what we got going on over here hello hello shout out to the hello. i can't hear you hi hi how are you doing i am sitting here listening to your stream how are okay, you doing? you have you have you have either something else playing in the background youtube something else um music but anyway how old are you i just turned it off it was pandora yes sir. Uh, how I'm old 30. are you okay uh I'm what do 30. you got for me on the topic well for me personally and this is just a personal opinion i it doesn't matter about the fear or the love for me i want to be respected if you respect me everything else will fall into place so if you're a man coming to me as a woman, you know how to address me as a woman. You know how to speak to me as a woman. And me being a woman, seeing you as a man who respects men and all. The, why if should I men man, respect, I respect you? Them because that's what I was taught. Why should, why, should, why should a man respect you in what way? By the way he addresses me, the way he speaks to me. Uh, I mean, even if he doesn't want to speak to me. that I mean, me personally... I was taught to respect all men, and that's how I come at all men. It's just mm -hmm. a respect thing. Like you, I don't know you from here to there, but I'm going to address you as Mr. Sir. And that's just the way that I was raised. My mom, she was married. My grandmother, she was married. And well, the reason. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. I'm bringing up my mom. I think we're mixing. Uh -huh. I think we're mixing things up. Um, that's manners, but respect. Yes, but respect. Um, you know, there's, there's respect for life. That's one thing, but yes, men typically that. thrive on, men typically have much more of a desire to be respected. That's, that's, you don't hear women speak a lot about, I want to be respected first, because I'll be honest, men and women are, we're different. And why should a man respect you outside of the fact that you're an autonomous human being? Just because I respect him, I, I would guess. I'm, me personally, it's, it's given, it's earned. If you're a man and you come to me as a man, I'm going to respect you as a man. I'm not going to question your authority. I'm not going to question your word. For me, even with you learning about who you were, I heard, I was reading comments, Kevin Samuels is this, he's this, he's this, he's this he does this, he does this. But until I listen to your live stream for myself, and seeing what you were actually doing, I, I really could care less what anyone else thought about you because you are right. You, you, you hold women accountable where a lot of women don't hold themselves accountable. So 
I don't, I, you don't have to fear me or love me. Please respect me. Well, I, I think, I, I think I hear what you're saying. Um, I, maybe respect wouldn't be the word I use, but I get your overall, uh, overall tone. Uh, do you, have you ever been, or do you ever plan to be married? Well, that's a hard pill to swallow for me. I do have six children out of wedlock, so that'll be up to the man if that's what he chooses to pursue in me. Six children? I can't. Did you say six? Yes, sir, I do. I have four by one guy and two by another. And why didn't you or either one of the fathers uh, choose to marry? The, the, the first guy, he just wouldn't provide. I mean, I stayed, I stuck, you know, I stayed within the relationship for the wrong reasons. I wanted this big, happy family. I wanted to paint this big, happy family, but that's ultimately not what he wanted to do. And he didn't want to provide. My dad provided for my family. Well, my okay, mother. And what family. about the second one? And he was a lot younger than I was. And he, I wouldn't say he didn't want to provide. He didn't have the drive to do it, I guess. Yeah, I would say uh, this is probably not a good show for this, but I would love for you to come back because I'm always curious as to why, why, why women tend to give men the highest honor a woman can give a man multiple times, hoping that guys will get better when there are other men out there who are already doing the things that so many women say they want and they're childless and, wi and wifeless and womanless. But this is, not the, this is not a good time to do this. Maybe you should come back. I appreciate you coming in. Have a good day. You're welcome. Thank you for having me. I think I understand what she was saying on this whole uh, respect thing. I think we I think sometimes we just use words differently. Um, Giselle, you're next. Hello, just got to unmute yourself. Hi. Hi. How old are you? I'm 19. 19. All right. Modern women, would you love to be loved or feared? Which one? What do you think? Um, most definitely, I would like to be feared. Um, not mm. because I want to, but it's just like it comes off like that. You, you <laughs> want to be you want to be feared, though? Kind of. Why? Kind of. I don't know. I guess it's just some type of aspect of my personality, I suppose. Well, I get it may be an aspect of your personality, but it is, is it the way you want the men of the world to uh, treat you and address you? No. Okay. So while you may come across as, let's just use the word fear, how do you want men to look at you and uh, experience you? Uh, like a loving person, I suppose. Yeah. All right. So... I think we just kind of touched upon the paradox. So many women today are operating outside of their natural, let's just call it femininity, that they're coming across as being more harsh or cold. But when it, when it gets right down to it, you really want to be treated or experienced as something completely different. Was that, would you think that's pretty accurate? Yeah. All right, good. I think we can think. I think that's right on the dot. All right, appreciate it, guys. See, this is one of the one of the biggest issues. We women more than any of us, women more than men, really are are influenced by the interaction of other women. This is why, we like cult leaders and things like that. If you've ever wondered how guys and cults were ever able to get women to do a bunch of stuff they would use the opinion of the other women to sway one woman who was out of line. So if let's just say if women in a group are doing quote unquote, the right thing, then it's easier for individual other women to do the right thing. But if women of a group are doing the quote unquote wrong thing, it's easier for the women who would want to go do the right thing to go on board with the wrong thing. This is why this whole thought culture, slut walk, this, that, the, get out here sexual liberation independence is 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 so difficult for women who are swimming against the current to get back more to their natural spot this is where the whole term pick me's and and all this stuff comes from women can't 
women who are who want to say, you know what, I respect the fact that you want to be strong and independent, don't need no man, but I want a husband and kids, they're told they're stupid. They're told they're stupid and, and that kind of stuff. Um, Vanessa, go ahead and unmute yourself. And I see the guys in the chat room as, as well. Hey, Kevin, how you doing? How are you? How old are you? I'm 29. 29. Uh, yes. Single, married, what? I am um, engaged to be married. All right. What do you got on the topic? So that means you're single, but you're engaged. What do you got on the topic? Yes, yeah, single. <laughs> right. um, I I feel like um, modern women would rather be feared. I disagree with it. But I feel like, you know, um, a lot of my peers would rather be feared. Um, and, and, my, and my perspective is maybe due to insecurity that they're... Um, going to be left or you know you made a point when you made a point about your income mm -hmm. and stuff like that um I happened to ask my fiance I was like listen if I was making more than a certain amount and I was a 10 or what have you uh would that influence you on how, how can I say this like I think women feel like if they're feared it'll keep their man around more like oh, you know what okay. I mean I get it I'm articulating uh... Well, um, no. I'll tell no. you right now, men want, <laughs> men want more than anything else. Men want peace. You know, in the short term, it may make for good spicy makeup sex. But more than anything else, men really, truly, truly want peace. Uh, and yeah, don't do that. Don't do that. When you, when you, when you, you have a wedding date set? Um, yeah, COVID has kind of put a wrench in it. Um, but we we hope to be engaged by by next year by December of next year. I'm sorry, married by December of next year. All right. Okay. Well, congratulations. I'm going to move on through here, clipping through here. Yeah, ladies. Thank look, you. I'm gonna tell you this, ladies. Don't put short term triggering of men as a high priority. You got to think about the long term. We got to think about in terms of years versus in terms of days. Um, Nicole, go ahead and wave. Hello, hello. I see you in the call queue, Nicole. Go ahead and wave. All right, let's bring Nicole in. Hello. Hi. H hello. How are you? I can barely... Hello? Hello, can you hear me? Hello? Where did Nicole go? Hello, can you hear me? Hello? Hello? Okay. I don't get it. Um, just a second. Okay. Uh, Cassidy. Cassidy, what's going on? Hello, Cassidy. Can you hear me? I can. I don't know what just happened on that one, but how are you? Good. How are you? Can I Good. not be how old are YouTube you? if you don't mind? That's cool. Thank you. My name, oh, I'm sorry. Um, I'm 29 years old. <laughs> 29 years old? Yes, sir. Um, all right. So what do you got on the topic? So... I don't believe this myself. However, I believe that a lot of women like to be feared because uh, they rather be in control, rather be rather in control. Okay. If that makes sense. You say it again. Women would rather be in control than be controlled. Right. Uh, women would rather be in control than be controlled. How do you think that's going to work out long term for most women? It's not going to work out at all because <laughs> I've, I've experienced that my early 20s through mid 20s and I found out that did not work at all. So I had to change my ways really quickly. All right. Hold on just a second. All right, folks, okay. I have to do something real quick. I'm going to take a quick break. Uh, we're going to come back to this. Let's do this real quick. Uh 
Pour nous, nous l'aimons parce qu'il nous a aimés le premier.
about that. Sorry about that. All right, we are back. Let's put you over here. And da, 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 da. all right, we're going to bring you back in. All you back in at the same time. Boom. So, Cassidy, where were we at? Sorry, can you hear me? I can. Awesome. How are you doing? I am good. Again, how are you? I am well. All right, we're going to bring, does anybody, is everybody here okay with being shown on YouTube? If you're not okay with being shown, wave your hand like this. Okay, I'm going to get to Isabel. For, okay, I'm going to get to Cassidy first, and I'm going to get to uh, Isabel, and then the rest of you, I'll get to you. Isabel, what's going on? Go ahead and unmute yourself. Hi, How are you? Kevin. I'm good. How are you? I'm good. How old are you? 21. Good. All right. So what do you got for me on the topic? I think modern women, me, not me personally, but modern women love to be feared because it comes down to like what you were saying. They don't like to not show, they don't want to show their vulner, vulnerable side because they're afraid of getting hurt. And mm -hmm. it's the idea of like, you have to be that strong, independent woman and like, I don't need no man. I don't need anybody to get through life because like, if you need somebody to get through life, it comes off as weakness and like kind of playing the role of being a man essentially okay. and being like in charge of yourself. I think you're right. I think, how about this? Of the Okay, what I have is I have people on the call queue and I'm just gonna have a conversation with the women right now without the chat room because I wanna talk to the women. Whether you wanna be seen or not, I have a question for you ladies. If I Thanos snapped my fingers tomorrow and it went back to a world where women could actually take pride in being soft, feminine, caring, nurturing, all the things that I think a lot of women truly, really want, would you rather live that life or would you rather live this one? I personally would rather live that life just because like based on my personal experience, like being in STEM as a woman, and having to play that role of being like in charge and you have okay. to be assertive, it becomes exhausting over time. You'd rather be softer and feminine and have people help you rather than be hyper competitive. Right. Because like, I just have family and seeing that for my older sisters who are in their thirties, it's like, you see what happens when you are like, I am a strong independent woman, but you're single and you're struggling and it's way harder. All right, so, uh, so none of you are on camera. So, Amira, you're going to have to rotate yours. But Nikita, what do you have to say? Yeah, I just think a lot of modern women don't really know how to take full accountability for how they act. Okay. Um, in, in what way? In what ways? Um, I don't... Like, what do you mean in what ways? Well, accountability for how they act in relationships uh, yeah, with men. Relationships. Okay. Oh, okay. What do you think that comes from? Um, From what I've seen, it comes from them not knowing how to be in a long-term relationship. Okay. Britt, go ahead and unmute yourself. Uh, hey, Britt, how are you? I'm good. How are you? Good. What do you got for me? Um, so I was really just calling in. Um, I don't know if I missed anything trying to, you know, I was well I was when I was asking audio. I was asking about this whole thing about modern women, you know, being feared versus being loved. A lot of modern women are really doing a lot of overtly things that are like Megan the Stallion said it's her job to make men feel she's she likes making men feel uncomfortable. And things like that. So I'm like, do modern women really like being feared or would they rather be loved? That was my question. What do you think? So I believe that modern day women really want to be loved. Mm -hmm. I just don't think they know how to be loved. Um, I feel like a lot of them don't really know what men want. Mm -hmm. um, and I also feel like a lot of women feel like men are, they're equal. Like they don't believe in, um, 
the submissiveness. They don't believe in that. Um, they don't know how to be vulnerable. And I feel like a lot of women have probably been, felt like they've been hurt by men a lot. And so they take that hurt to the next relationship. And mm. um, if they have a decent guy, they just don't know how to receive the love from him. Mm. Um, and so it kind of turns into them, it comes off as them just trying to be strong or intimidate the men, if that makes sense. It does, it does, it does, it does. So now I'm going to uh, ask you, Amira, how are you, Amira? I'm doing well, thank you. All right, so what I'm going to do is bring you on some, oops, uh, that's, I don't want to do that. Participants, close that. There we go. Uh, that's you. I'm going to give you a side-by-side -side screen, and we're going to chit-chat a bit. Folks, I shut the chat room down because I want to just discuss with the women. Hi, Amira. Amira, go ahead and introduce yourself to everybody who may not know who you are. I'm Amira. I am a guest, a panelist, well, a guest panelist on the Lapeef Network. Okay. Um, tonight, I'm talking about this whole thing of women, modern women almost embracing the fact that they would rather be feared, you know, than loved. Um, it's a general idea I've had for a minute, but I wanted to kind of bring it out in the wake of the Megan the Stallion article talking about she believes it's her job to make men feel uncomfortable and about so many things we're seeing in popular culture today with, you know, women being allowed to just be as flamboyant, exercise as many options as they want to, say things that men can't do, and the the power that so many women seem to feel like they garner from that. But I don't I'm not sure that women want to feel that. What do you take it and speak about how you want to go ahead? When the lady was talking about respect, I did understand her a little bit. And I know you did too. I yeah, I did. You. I understood what she was meaning. Yeah, I did. Right. So uh, I wanted to expand a little bit on what she was saying. Hopefully she kind of agrees with me, but this is what I got from it. I mm -hmm. got that she was trying to say that women prefer to be respected. But part of the thing is I think a lot of women see being feared as being respected because mm -hmm. It's almost like, if you fear me, that means you respect me. Mm -hmm. And I think a lot of women feel like, oh, we've come so far. <laughs> we've done all this stuff. We need to be respected as men, kind mm -hmm. of. And I think that's what a lot of women think is like, men aren't really, how can I say this? They're not really respected so much, but they're feared. And that's what I want to. I think, I think, I think you're onto something. I think a lot of women want the... They want acknowledgement that they are more than just, um, that they can accomplish things. Like um, my grandmother, my grandmother, uh, she was a book smart woman. Uh, she was brilliant in her own way. But back when she grew up, women were really expected to be uh, more domestics. Mm. And, and, I, and my, my mother, on the other hand, she was respected at her school. My, my mom had, a, I don't want to knock my mom out, but my mom <laughs> had a lot of respect. So I can understand why women can want to have respect for being able to accomplish whatever they choose to want to accomplish. And then if they choose to want to stay in the role of a mother, uh, housewife, what and so forth, that they have as much respect as other women would have as they, if they chose to work in the work world. Am I, well, this is, I, oh, okay. Go ahead. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to cut you off. Um, you you had mentioned something about feminism. I wanted to, it kind of ties into what you're saying right now about the respect versus being loved. Mm -hmm. Or I'm sorry, feared versus being loved. I wanted to ask you this. This is something that has been on my mind because we had a talk on Lapeef as well about this. We were having a debate about feminism. And you had mentioned that you your definition of feminism is the ability to choose. Yes. While my definition of feminism was that they wanted equality of the rights, socially, financially, and politically. Mm -hmm. So what do you think, uh, what are they both kind of the same thing or am I getting it wrong? Well, and, and I wanna tread kind of lightly cause I wanna leave this for the academicians. There are three waves of feminism. And the first wave of feminism, if I recall correctly, it was in the, came along with the right to vote. 
uh, property rights, you know, um, at the turn of the century, like the suffrage movement. And I'm going to go really, really light here because I would rather not say it than be wrong. Mm -hmm. uh, women wanted to be granted almost full citizenship with men. OK. Mm -hmm. uh, and I believe along around the second wave of feminism after women got that, they wanted the ability to choose. It's like, well, if we want to, you know, um, go into the work world, pursue law degrees or this, or we want to stay at home uh, and, and be housewives, mothers, that and such and so forth. So the ability to have full citizenship, the ability to choose. That's where I think what you were talking about and what I'm talking about, anybody can agree mm -hmm. that that makes sense. I don't want women to be second class citizens. Uh -huh. I want women to have the ability to choose. But where I bristle is where we try to act as though men and women are equal as in the same. We are not. As yeah. human beings, Amira and Kevin, biologically, we have far more similarities in our brain, our capacity, such and so forth. But our differences in our neurochemical makeup, uh, our hormone levels, and it's our differences that make us extremely unique. So when mm -hmm. we try to start saying that men and women should be treated as equals in all things, that's when I bristle because then you start trying to engineer um, relationships. And I'll, I'll do you think that they wanted? Oh, sorry. Go ahead, go ahead. Go ahead. Do you think that they wanted the right to choose because they didn't want to be forced into the military or forced into uh, what, what is it called? I know you know the word better than I do. When you're forced into the military for war time, drafted. Draft, right? Is it? You think they wanted that choose that that ability to choose because they didn't want to be forced to be drafted? Well, I, I don't know. Well, I know that uh, here's what I do know: that men don't want to see their daughters on the front lines. So there were men who were in part of the suffrage movement as well. I think women wanted the right to choose because prior to 1960, um, women really. Men and women were at a great disadvantage of biology. We did not have the right to, um, outside of marriage, um, birth, children, mm -hmm. determined a lot. Uh, mm -hmm. With the advent of birth control, we had the birth control, third wave feminism, and, and a lot of things happened. And human beings, we, we evolved slowly. Your people are from Very. Lebanon? Lebanon? Yes, Lebanon? yes, we live in Lebanon. Human culture is a slow progression. We have made right. so many changes in the last hundred years that, our, that our, our physiology can't keep up with it. But at the end of the day, one thing that we do know is in the Netherlands and more egalitarian uh, places on the planet. And when Sweden. Men, okay, yeah, in Sweden, yes. When, when men and women are left to sort themselves out, we do it just fine. Mm -hmm. Men and women have their equals and you know what you see you saw you see more men in science engineering technology math and more women in healthcare, nursing these kind of things mm -hmm. we know how to do this true so very true like i have a i have a, a, a facebook group it's called the mix and all i did mm -hmm. was i picked a bunch of there are a bunch of people who said hey i'd like to join the group and i asked some baseline questions about the men and the women and i just threw them all in a room and relationships are popping out of there. Marriages are popping out of there. We we know how to do this, but what we're trying to do is we're trying to engineer this. Uh, and, and we don't even want the engineering, I'll be honest. I think, think what we're starting to see is women, when given an option, more women are saying, you know what? If I choose to want to go to college and get a degree and get a PhD, but then if I choose, I want to be a mother, I want to be just as respected as if I did have a PhD. That's the world. I'm. That's the world I'm good with. I'm good with well, that. Well, can I ask you this just really quickly? Do you think that they should? Okay, <laughs> I know it's going to sound strange, but do you think that they should be respected exactly the same? Uh, yes. A mother, a woman who chose motherhood versus a woman who chose her career. Uh, well, I guess if we're rating it as far as a point system, mm -hmm. I think they should be respected. Similarly, but honored differently. Let me explain. I don't think coming up in a single parent household and, and I saw my friends in a nuclear nuclear household, I knew there's something different. I had a lot of love 
and I had a lot of support, but there was something different with not having a dad there. And I think that women who have the ability to go out and become a Supreme Court justice who choose to stay at home and raise their own children should be honored. They should truly be honored because it's not as though they don't have the capacity. I don't like uh, women who aren't smart. I love I love smart women. I want to sit around and discuss uh, classics. I want to sit around and discuss a lot of things. I don't just want a bobblehead. But I also want that woman to allow me to go out and fight the world and, and come back and provide. And so she can take, instead of teaching the world, which would be great if she taught the children to teach our kids. So I think we, we missed, we, we have dishonored being a mother and a, and a wife. And that really came along in my mother's generation, the baby boomers. They turned and looked at their mothers and their great grandmothers as being throwbacks of a time uh, long ago. And they didn't know the damage they were doing. They couldn't know. I did a broadcast about that uh, a couple of days ago. So go ahead. The feminism. Uh, so back to your topic, bringing it full circle. <laughs> back to your topic, the, the being feared versus being loved. Mm -hmm. Can they have both? And can they want both instead of just choosing? Y yes, I think I had fear for my, for my grandmother, but I had the fear of my grandmother like I had the fear of God. But I also had love for my grandmother because she gave me a level of nurturing and care that to this day, I still feel. There is, there is, a, there is a level of reverence that should come um, from, from staying in our roles. Similar with my grandfather. He is the measure of a man to me this, to this day, and he has a fourth grade education. I long ago surpassed my grandfather in academic pursuits and, and income, but only in my 40s did I catch up to him in man. D does that make sense? Yes, it does. So when we know how to do this, we just need to give each other, like I said, it's broken. It's broken, and we have to give each other some grace, some mercy, look at things that are working other places, take the things that are working and, and be willing to work with people. I said it wholeheartedly. We lost a great actor in Michael K. Williams, and we're seeing people dying alone in, from 40 to 60 because we're not meant to be fractured and broken like this. I grew up in a time where we went to family reunions and things like that. We just don't have those things anymore. And there's always going to be a longing in human beings for for group people and identity. And the first one is the people that look like you and share your name. So uh, thanks for coming on. I, I'm glad you were able to pop onto the show. Perfect timing. I really too. appreciate it. Thank, Thank you. Thank you very much. Bye-bye. Amira, everybody. Bye. <laughs> look, a lot of times I think people get me um, uh, uh, misconstrued because there's a there's a portion of this show that's um, entertainment um, and, and a big portion of it is education I got to give a little bit of medicine and, 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 and put some chocolate I mean put some cherry flavored syrup in there but at the end of the day I have faith in people the people overall, when you leave us alone and we have time to sit, think and process, we can tend to come up with uh, creative solutions to solve basic problems. That's why I, right now we're so busy as human beings that most of us don't have time to think. This is why sometimes it's good to just take a vacation, decompress, such and so forth, because you can really start to learn and value what's important in life. I don't subscribe to this eternal gender war even the cold war between the soviet union and the united states ended we are not enemies men and women are not enemies ladies you don't want to be feared you do want to be loved you want to be loved by your by your 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 man you want to be loved by your community your family and vice versa men want that too um but we are going to have to get to a place to where we have to come back to the table and hammer this out we cannot walk around and say, well, it's my job to make you feel uncomfortable. And it's my job to sit around and make you feel like you're less than. Nobody wins when the family uh, fights. So, all right. I appreciate everybody joining in tonight. It's 
three minutes past. I'm trying to try to keep it straight at two hours. Um, I'm in the process of relocating from one spot to another. A lot of things going on. Stay tuned. Shout out to the CIA, the confident, intelligent, and assertive men out there. One love to the FBI, the feminine, the beautiful, inspirational ladies. Ah, what a day. What a day. Stay tuned. Keep it going. Until the next time, you can now how we do it. Peace. We're gone. Somebody said Bentley so Bear, Baccarat Bear. Hold on. Yeah.